Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So surreal that this is the next video that I'm making. The last video I uploaded was my birth vlog and now this is like first vlog I'm uploading as a mom, which is just so surreal. I am two weeks into motherhood. She was two weeks old yesterday. We've had our doctor's checkups. She's gaining weight. I am exclusively breastfeeding, so that's always, I feel like, a fear for moms, at least, at least for me, was like, is she gaining enough weight? Is she getting enough milk? Am I producing enough? Etc. Um, but she is, and it all looks good. I don't usually look this good. Not saying that I look good, but I do have my hair and makeup done because we did do our newborn photo shoot today. So I had to get a little bit dressed up because we got some portraits of her and I, her and I and Johnny, some single shots. I have not looked this put together since way before pre-baby. So I don't like to set unrealistic expectations to other moms out there thinking that I just look like this on the day to day. I usually don't have any makeup. My hair is usually greasy and I've been in sweatpants because breastfeeding in a dress, this is a nursing bra, super cute. Uh, breastfeeding in a dress is just not realistic. So anyways, that's not what this vlog is about. This vlog will be covering all of my postpartum and newborn must-haves. So being that I'm two weeks in, I've obviously learned so much in these first few weeks of motherhood and I have so much more to learn. But I wanted to review some of my favorite items and things that have gotten me through these past two weeks uh, with you guys because pre-baby I was scavenging the internet being like what do I need those first few weeks and like what's the most important thing, um, things that I need. So that's exactly what this video is gonna be. Um, it's funny, you can't even, she literally looks like a doll. I swear this is my baby. Oh, sorry, she's sleeping. Can't even see her face with this little bonnet. Ooh. She's so tired after our shoot. I'm gonna start with my postpartum faves and then we can go and dive into my newborn faves. So I'm not gonna go, I'm honestly too lazy to go and get all of these items to like show you here like this item. And I'm gonna just talk about the items and then I'm gonna link them all below. So as I discuss, if you're interested in checking it out, you can go click the link below and that's it. Just keeping it real, y'all. <laughs> I have no energy, extra energy these days. Um, okay, so for postpartum, there's a few products that um, I have been loving and honestly, it's exactly what the hospital has kind of guided me into using and gave me at the hospital because I feel like whatever they have you use there is like exactly what you need to heal. I did get a few stitches down there, so healing hasn't been like easy peasy, but it hasn't been horrible at all. I didn't like tear really, really bad. Obviously, Obviously, if you didn't tear or you tore horribly, these items may or may not work for you. But this is what I have found works for me. So step one, disposable underwear. Hospital does give you some. Um, I found these on Amazon and I actually think Mary Lawlessly was the one who originally posted these. Such a great price, much cheaper than like the Freedom Mom ones. I did have some Freedom Mom ones. These are super cheap, comes in a big pack. I ordered a few and they're disposable and they're soft and they're not itchy and they're like boy shorty because the last thing you wanna be doing is like doing is like picking a wedgie. So disposable underwear, step one. A lot of people have tried to recommend diapers instead of disposable underwear. Like instead of wearing a pad with your undies, you wear a diaper. <laughs> Sounds so weird. I bought diapers, adult diapers. I just didn't ever wear them or get into them. I feel like I would have rather just like changed my pad throughout the day versus like changing a whole diaper or just like feeling like I'm sitting in a whole diaper. That's just not a vibe for me. So I went the disposable underwear route. And then with that, the hospital gives you pads, but obviously I ran out of those. So I will link my favorite pads here. They're like extra long in the front and back, which you want. Cause if you're like laying down or moving, whatever, you wanna just make sure you're covered. So these pads are great. The next thing that is like the most important thing are these witch hazel pads. Um, they're little round things. They gave me some again in the hospital, but I had some at home. Um, Tux makes um, a great, Tux is a great brand, uh, which you can buy in your like local pharmacy, I believe. I'll link it below, but they have plenty of other brands. They're just like witch hazel medicated little pads. And I don't just like, dab myself with that. I actually don't dab myself with them at all. I literally 
take those little circle pads and line them up on the pad. Okay, I'm making like a, making like a pad sandwich. So you grab the undies, and then you've got the pad. Then you've got the witch hazel pads. And then next, lastly, is you have dermaplast, which everybody recommended all over TikTok and in the hospital. It's like a pain itch uh, stinging like reliever. So after that layer I just said, you spray the dermaplast on, and then that's like your pad sandwich, and then that's what you slip on and wear. And it's just like all those layers are really great for like healing, pain, itching, all of that. Those are like the essential things. The next essential thing that you need is a peri bottle. Again, hospital uh, will give you one that's just like a rare, uh, just like a squeegee bottle, but they sell these online where it's like uh, an upside down, I'll show you below, but it's like a bottle and it has a little like thing so you don't have to like put your hand under you and squeeze up. This is like a little bottle with a nozzle and it squeeze, squeezes water up because you don't want to be wiping yourself um, after birth. It's very, very not something you want to do. So you use water um, to cleanse yourself and then you pat dry, as my doctor says. Um, so peri bottle, next major thing that you need to get. Another TMI thing, I, I feel like this whole first section is very TMI, but TMI thing, Stool softener, not a fun subject for anyone to talk about, but that first stool postpartum is not, I was, I was terrified. I was terrified, literally. So take a stool softener for a few days or a week if you're scared, just to make sure everything is smooth. That's it, don't need to go into more detail than that. A very frivolous item, which I've seen people on TikTok make these themselves. They're like padsicles, which apparently you can make these by putting like a pad, aloe vera, witch hazel, and then like freezing it. I did not go to that length. I just found these on Amazon. Again, Freedom Mom has them, but I found this brand on Amazon that is super cheap as well. Um, and they're like padsicles, basically. They're, it's like a big ice pack that has like fabric over it, so it's like a pad, um, and you like break it and it's cold. So when you're healing and you feel, you know, kind of uncomfortable down there, um, this is great. So those are not a necessity, but and I didn't use them like all the time, but I did use them a few times in the beginning when I was really sore, and it was so nice and cooling, so I loved that. Those are my postpartum must-haves for healing down there. Um, some extra things that I've been loving. I haven't been using a girdle that much, which is like a waist trainer. I've used it a few times. I think I'm gonna get more into it now, but I'm just like, it's not comfortable. I've been sitting and laying down a lot all day and you can't really sit well in them. So I think as I'm going on like walks or standing up and walking around a bit more, I'll wear that like waist trainer girdle thing to like suck everything back in. Um, but I haven't used it loads. Breastfeeding, I said I was breastfeeding. So, so this is like now moved into like postpartum, AKA newborn must haves for mom and baby. Breastfeeding, obviously as a new breastfeeder, my nips have been very, very uh, sensitive, especially the first week they were like dying. So after they got cracked, I used a nipple shield, which I only recommend using as you are healing your nips because um, I don't think she was able to like drink as much and drain my boob as much when I had the shield on. Um, but it was really good because it like kept her from latching directly on like the really sore nip. Maybe to TMI, but anyways, yes. And then another thing, um, our, my lactation consultant in the hospital recommended that I don't use nipple balm or nipple cream. I use these little, well, mine are my by Medela, but they're like little hydrogel nipple covers and that you stick them on and it's like a constant kind of cooling gel effect that hydrates your nips <laughs> instead of like nipple balm because babies sometimes don't like the nipple balm and it's like going directly in their mouth. These are great and I've been using them every day. One pack lasts three days. I like to put them in the fridge, put them directly on. I change mine usually like every day, every two days, but they're kind of expensive. I think they have some cheaper versions. I'm just gonna 
I'll link the one that I have below. Love that. Um, second product that I've been using all the time is a Hakka. Thank God for the Hakka. After my milk came in, I noticed that the boob that I was not feeding on was like dripping. And I was like, oh my God, this is exactly what the Hakka is for. Cause I didn't ever think I would actually use it, but I guess I did. So basically you put it on the opposite boob you're not feeding on and it sucks, suctions to it. It's not like a pump, it just like suctions to it and then it kind of catches the extra that drips off you. And I have literally 20 bags in the freezer. I feel like a legit cow, it's been amazing, but it's all this Hakka basically collecting as she's feeding on the other boob. So I like swear by this thing. Um, I am incorporating one bottle a day for her, mainly because I just needed like a few more hours of sleep at night. I was really suffering. So this way somebody else can actually feed her through that bottle, through this like extra breast milk. And we're using this Dr. Brown newborn bottle, like anti-colic bottle. Um, it's like the perfect size for her and she takes it really well. A lot of people said to introduce bottles like no later than two weeks. We did this like after a few days after I got that extra milk because you don't want your baby to get too used to the boob apparently then they won't take a bottle. She's been really good about taking, um, taking it. She like has no problem whatsoever. And then I also have been pumping once a night. So when she gets that bottle, I wake up and pump because you don't want your fly to decrease, which is something I learned about. And also I wake up and my boobs are so sore, like I have to get the milk out somehow if she's not feeding. Pumping just takes, I can pump for like literally five minutes and get just enough out to like relieve myself versus feeding her can take like an hour sometimes. So it's just much easier to pump in case you were like, well, you're still waking up. Why don't you just feed her? That's why. Um, I've been using the LV pump, super easy, hands-free pump, love it. Okay, aside from all things boob, newborn essentials for her. Where do I begin? The Docatot, love that. I use that and this other bassinet by Design Duo, which I will tag below. The Docatot's great because you can like put it on your bed, put it on the sofa, put it on the counter while I'm cooking or eating dinner or whatever. It's very mobile and safe in terms of like the fact she's like not gonna roll out of it. I mean, you have to kind of monitor. I wouldn't just like leave her in this dock top and leave the room for a while, but um, it's great. And then this other little bassinet has been like our go-to. It's basically what she's in all day, every day. So like if I'm not holding her, I don't put her in our crib throughout the day as she naps. I just put her in that bassinet. Like and it's right in our kitchen. Uh, next essential are these pajamas that are buttoned on the front and open at the bottom. It's like a dress, but it has like scrunchy elastic at the bottom. So key. I mean, button up onesies at night, snaps. Ugh, that is such a pain. That is not a newborn essential. It's like the opposite of essential. Either get the zip up onesies or these little ones that are even easier because you literally just like pull them up over their butt and pull them back down. So easy, especially they fall asleep while you feed them. So like if they're asleep, you need to just like pull it up to get cool air on like their feet and their body. It's, it's key. I will tag my favorite ones below. Swaddles. I have two that I love. I tried a few smart swaddles, like the ones with the Velcro, but I just don't feel like it works really well. So I'll put some of the super basic muslin swaddles. They have lots of different colors. I'll just put the white ones, but they're like this one. It's really easy to wrap her in and make a little type burrito because babies love to be burritoed. I'm gonna switch arms. She's so heavy. She's like seven pounds. <laughs> Babies love and need to be swaddled because it reminds them of being in the uterus, like all tight and compact in there. But this is like a major must have. A diaper warmer, I just feel better in the middle of the night or when I'm changing her. Like it just feel like kinder to her and her butt when I have a warm wipey, it's so not necessary. But for me, I just like, it's so comforting and cozy like to have a warm wipey, like it's so cold and harsh. They're getting changed a lot too. So I just, I don't know. Love the wiper war wipey warmer. I tried a few diaper bombs. So far, my favorite is just Aquaphor for babies. Super basic, but super effective and easy. No scent like whatsoever. Easy to put on. Great. Haven't had any issues with diaper rash there. 
I feel like I have so many newborn essentials. The bathtub that we use, so many of you guys like love those like big tubs, but those are better for like toddlers. Newborn, I found like they can't really sit up. So I found this little bath that has like a little hammock in it. It's like a little swing. And you can eventually take the swing out and use that as like a tub, like what you see a lot of people using. But while they're so little, that is been amazing for bath time. That's like my go-to. Burp cloths. I feel like it's an obvious, but a must. She spits up a lot and burps a lot. So I feel like that's a major must for us. So a bigger item that's been a must is our Duna. So we haven't really gone anywhere, but it's a stroller and a car seat of one. And when we go to the doctor's office or something, anywhere, and as I continue to like, maybe get out of the house more than just her doctor's appointments, uh, it's gonna be super nice because basically when she's in the car seat, you can just unclick it, drop the wheels down and Go. So it's a car seat and a stroller in one, which is super amazing and convenient. And then like getting her out of her car seat and putting her in a stroller or whatever, getting a stroller out of the back and then putting the car seat in, such a mission. So that has been awesome. It's a bigger item, but if you're, I mean, you need a car seat, you need a stroller. So it's like a two for one. So highly recommend that. A white noise machine. White noise is like essential for newborns. Um, I did not know this, but inside the womb, they are constantly hearing like a shh, like super loud noise, which is apparently like equivalent to us hearing a vacuum cleaner all day long. So silence is actually like not something that these babies are used to. They're used to like a constant rumble of like your, the amniotic fluids and your blood circulation. Everything is constantly making noises. So a white noise machine is great. I will tag the one I have below. And also this thing called a shusher, I believe it is, is like a portable white noise machine. So just take batteries and I put it in like her bassinet where like, as I'm changing her, if she's getting a little fussy. It just literally goes shh. They love that. So if your baby's fussy, you just go shh really loudly into their ear, like loud, it calms them down. But basically this is like a machine that does it for you because doing shh, all the time can be exhausting. Um, those are essential. Oh, a very random one, but a diaper caddy. I bought one for my bedroom and I bought one for downstairs. And I swear we change more diapers downstairs in my family room than we do in our actual changing table, um, at least for now. So it's basically like a little diaper caddy. I'll tag the um, two that I have here for my bedroom and, and for downstairs are super cute. And you put like your diapers, your wipes, all your like things that you need. Um, and you put them in there and it's like perfect for convenient changes like on the go. You don't wanna go upstairs every time you need to change her because I change her like between every feeding. Another um, kind of expensive thing that we've been using is the outlet sock, which gives you a lot of peace of mind. It's basically a little sock that you put on their feet at night and it tests their um, blood oxygen level and heart rate. So if it ever drops below like the normal levels, it will alert you. So that's given me some peace of mind at night. And then we use also the Nanit cam um, above her crib, which tracks her movement and her sleep. So I know exactly like how much she's sleeping, when she woke up, when she went to bed, etc. So those are more expensive items, but just some things that have given me um, some peace of mind and some ease. And yeah, I think that's it. If I had to round up my top postpartum and newborn essentials, I think I just covered all of it. Obviously I'm missing all the basic stuff like shampoo, other clothes, socks, hats, like all of those basic things. But um, I feel like that is something that you already know. And I feel like the other things are things that maybe I didn't know going into motherhood um, that I would have found helpful. I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog and I enjoyed this little catch up. Feels good to film something and do something besides feed her. Feels like myself again. I'm excited to see you guys next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this video and you like the kind of content that I'm creating or if you have any ideas for any other content that you guys wanna see, I'm always happy to try to do that for you guys. So I'll see you guys next time. Enzo and I say bye. Say bye. Bye. Bye guys. <laughs> see you later.